Chris Benjamin to come and present the uh, Alumnus of the Year 2014 award. Uh, dear friends, I will start by reading the criteria for the Alta School of Science Alumnus of the Year. Uh, the award is granted for pioneering or exceptional work, <coughs> social impact or efforts to increase the visibility of the School of Science. Moreover, the individual chosen as Alumnus of the Year is hoped to act in the role of promoting interaction between his or her own field and the School of Science and all the university as a whole. In 2014, special emphasis will be placed on entrepreneurship. And now, I'm very happy to introduce to you the 2014 School of Science Alumnus of the Year, Managing Director Rob Blauherz, Doctor of Science in Technology. Let me give a brief description of Rob, and then I'll leave the, the floor to him. Rob Blauherz received his Master of Science degree in the University of Leiden in the Netherlands in uh, 19. 97. He got his, he, there he became interested in low temperature uh, research and engineering in the famous Kameling Onnes Laboratory. Uh, for his PhD research, Rob moved to the low temperature laboratory of the then Helsinki University of Technology and obtained his PhD under the supervision of Professor Matti Krusius. He finished his dissertation on the quantum system superfluid helium free and its topologically stable defect in 2002. He then worked as a postdoctoral researcher back home in the Kameling Ones Laboratory in uh, uh, the Netherlands until 2004 when he moved back to Otania. Here he studied the development of a low temperature refri refri refrigeration uh, using a mechanical cryocooler for pre-cooling the apparatus. Instead of the traditional liquid helium-4 bath at four Kelvin temperature. The first cryostat of this kind started running in the lab in 2007. Uh, uh, his colleagues tell me that Rob has the gift of producing simple and practical designs, always relying on the most advanced technology solutions. For this reason, his uh, cryocooler-based refrigerator was an instant success. Several requests were received for more devices. Uh, Rob decided to start commercial delivery. Together with his longtime study friend Peter Forselman, he established the Blue Force Cryogenics Company in 2008, where he is nowadays the managing director. The main product of this company is a refrigerator with three important features a fully automated, computer controlled operation, no cryogenic liquids are needed and a self-contained, ready-to-use uh, delivery of apparatus. Uh, nowadays, the company has 25 employees and 30% worldwide market share in the sale of refrigerator systems to research establishments and universities. Thanks to the impressive feat of doubling its annual turnover from the previous year, Blue Force made it to the Technologia Kasvaya 2040 technology developers list. Recently, the Blue Force uh, machine was prominently displayed in a uh, full page photograph in the Time magazine in a story for general public about the promising future of 
quantum computing and its cooling requirements. Rob has maintained a strong connection uh, with Alta University and has employed several of uh, the university's researchers in product development positions. Having turned a great research innovation into a successful company, Rob is an excellent choice for the School of Science Alumnus of the Year 2014. Microphone on? Or, uh, yes, yes, good. So, um, dear Dean, uh, President, faculty members, students, researchers, old colleagues, and of course, uh, today's special guest, the recently graduated doctors. Um, I believe you did all the hard work of, of uh, the past years, and this day, Research Day, is mostly in honor of you. So, first, I would like to start with a big congratulations to all of you. Um, and then um, let me start by saying um, how honored I am to receive this award today. Um, when I received a telephone call from uh, Dean Risto Nieminen a few months ago, asking if I would be willing to accept this award, I could have really not believed it at first. I mean, I believe the output of my scientific research has been more than decent, but my scientific career has just not been that long. Um, Furthermore, it would be completely misplaced not to acknowledge that there are many people from this university that made much, con much greater contributions to science than I have. But talking more, uh, it then became apparent to me that this, year, th that this year's award, uh, special emphasis would be placed on entrepreneurship, um, which somewhat clarified the situation. Um, so since most of you uh, don't know me, uh, let me tell a little bit about my history with Alto University. Um, I came to Finland for the first time in 1996 uh, to later work on my PhD, PhD degree in a group of uh, Professor Matti Crucius in the Low Temperature Laboratory. Um, our t task at that time was to study rotating superfluids at ultra-low temperatures. Um, as you can perhaps imagine, uh, there is no equipment you can buy from a shop um, to perform these kind of measurements and experiments. And basically we had to build everything ourselves. This is where I learned the important skills that required to build ultra-low temperature systems. This has been the first and very important contribution of Alta University to my career path. Um, after finishing my PhD degree in 2002, I moved back to the Netherlands for a short while, uh, but then I was missing the Finnish sauna too much, and I returned in 2004 um, on a short-term contract uh, for an EU project. Um, and this was the time um, uh, there appeared this first type of cryocoolers, Risto mentioned on the market, that were po powerful enough so they could replace cryofluids, like liquid helium and liquid nitrogen. Historically, the necessity of these cryoliquids to reach ultra-low temperatures made the field very inaccessible. Uh, one requires special um, uh, lab infrastructure, it makes automation very difficult or almost impossible. So the systems were really not easy to use, and a fair amount of your research time was always invested in keeping your fridge alive. Um, systems combining these new cryocoolers with an ultra-low temperature stage could change all of that, but they were not commercially available at the time. Uh, I discussed the possibility um, of developing such a system with Professor Petty Hakon and also from the Low Temperature Lab, and he was very much interested. He then provided the funding to develop and build, build such a system for his laboratory. Um, this was obviously the second very important contribution of uh, the university, providing the infrastructure, tools, and financial means to develop this new ID. At this stage, it was really just all about building something fundamentally new, and there was no discussion about starting a company or whatsoever. In fact, 
I was still convinced that I was going to be a researcher the rest of my life. Um, the Low Temperature Laboratory is an internationally very well recognized laboratory and it receives many visitors. During the next two years or so, when we were developing the new system, there was a lot of interest from these visitors in these new systems. Many of them actually were asking if they could purchase such a system. And this was the first time when I started to think that, okay, maybe we could actually start and try make a company out of this idea. Uh, but of course, I was uh, very naive. As a physicist, I just did some small estimations and calculations to check if we could actually get a living out of this. I figured yes, but did not quite know how to get started. I proposed the, proposed the idea to a former study friend from the Netherlands, Peter Vosselman, who Risto already mentioned, who is a fine mechanic and also has a master's degree in physics. I tried to convince him to move to Finland and build the first, commission, first com commercial systems together with him. At this point, um, my wife ju jumped in and, better, and told me, or better us, that we really no should not start this whole thing without having a proper business plan in place. To be quite honest, I really no didn't know at that time what that implemented. In fact, in, at that time, I knew so, so little about running a business that I most likely couldn't tell you the difference between a balance sheet, sheet or a profit and loss report. Luckily, we were made aware of the Venture Cup, um, a three-stage business plan competition and regardless of winning it, by joining the competition, a group of professionals would va validate your ideas, look if it all makes sense, and if it did, you would advance to the next round. The competition was structured in such a way that if you made it all the way to the final round, you would end up having a full business plan. We joined the season in 2007-2008 and got an overall third place. This was a verification that our ID actually made sense and, of course, a very good motivation. I believe nowadays the Venture Cup competition no longer exists. Therefore, having um, people at the university, as was just explained, that can help scientists writing and validating a business plan is very beneficial and important. Another crucial point at the time uh, was the transfer of IP rights from the university to the company that we are about to start. I don't know really what's the current policy of the university, but at the time, we could obta obtain them at quite moderate uh, cost. Perhaps because in our case also there were no patents involved. Um, if the university wants to promote entrepreneurship, I believe they also should keep the IP transfer requirements very modest. I believe eventually the investment will come back to the state and university via tax money paid. Uh, we personally decided to go a route without investors and every euro uh, we spent in the fir first years was turned over many times and spent several times. And I think if there would have been significant payments to be made, uh, we simply wouldn't have survived in the beginning. Um, our company then was finally established in 2008 as a two-man spin-off company from the university. And according to the first business plan, the first systems were completely hand-built by Peter and me. With our business plan, we, borrowed, we were even able to borrow um, a small amount of money from the bank. Since the start, our company has then been steadily growing and about doubled in size every year. Um, especially in the first years, it has proven extremely valuable that many of the researchers of the Low Temperature Lab have been very positive and mentioned our company and products to their colleagues, for example, when they were, went to conferences and workshops. Um, Besides our own contribution, being able to make the systems reliable and easy to use, we were quite fortunate about the developments in the market. Um, the prices of liquid, have been, of liquid helium have been skyrocketing, pushing all researchers towards our type of systems. Um, also, our original estimate of the market was far too small. First of all, the, um, the new easy-to-use systems opened the market to research, uh, to research areas that in the past would never even have thought uh, they would go into low temperatures. Um, secondly, and maybe more important, the field, of, the field of quantum computing is rapidly expanding and they need the ultra low temperatures to run their processors. So besides university, universities and research institutes, there is now a commercial available application and actually uh, those make, a quite, uh, make up quite a, a significant part of our sales nowadays. Um, many people have come to me and asked if I can explain the reason for our success and how to generate more successful companies in Finland. Um, 
To be quite honest, I don't think there is something like a mathematical formula or a well-defined recipe. The start of any successful company, I think, is having a new idea, either for improving existing technology or process or for an entirely new product. Where the university can help is creating a breeding ground for such ideas by investing in basic research and creating independent thinkers. Here I would like to mention that I took the phrase creating independent thinkers from the former head of the low temper temperature laboratory, Professor Miko Palalan, uh, who was the head at the time I was working there. Actually, it was his definition of what is the lab responsibility, creating independent thinkers. He has also been one of the persons that has been very supportive in the process of starting our company. Let's hope not, but maybe creating independent thinkers may become more and more a challenge. The more predefined the degree program is getting uh, in order to make it more effective, uh, should not stop that. Also, I believe um, the focus should not be just on high growth companies. If one sets the standard too high, it will kill a lot of creativity. It will basically just prevent people from starting altogether. In our original business plan, we did not focus on high growth at all. Um, in my opinion, there is nothing wrong in having a small and stable, as long as it is a profit profitable company. Um, with the expectations being so high, it sometimes felt that small sized but profitable companies are no longer called a success. And I think it's quite the opposite. I truly believe it makes more sense to concentrate on volume, creating a large number of small spin offs. Uh, maybe not that interesting to investors, but it will create a vibrant scene for startups, and I believe it will also not be bad at all for the economy. In any case, if the idea is good and the market is there, these startups will naturally develop in fast growth companies anyway, as happened to us. Um, for me personally, the university has played an important role in almost every aspect of starting our company, and I really hope it will do, be able to do so for the new generation of spin-offs as well. Um, I also believe um, in the future the university will play an important role to our company. We are still growing, uh, full of new ideas, and therefore we will be in need of new researchers. And hopefully we can attract some of the new graduates from this university. Last uh, but not least, I hope it was clear from this speech, it has not been a one-man show to get here in front of you today. I owe a lot to the university, my old colleagues, my friends, and of course my family, especially my wife. Um, many thanks to all of you. I wish to conclude by thanking you all again for this award. It is a true honor.